Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's your first time. I'm Jada, founder of Unbound Creation. So if you tuned into my video last week, then you know that I talked to you guys a little bit about some of the benefits I've been experiencing ever since I decided to surrender to my fears. And I mainly talked about the fact that pretty much all my desires starting started to manifest with ease the moment I decided to, to surrender. So this week I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about that more in detail because it's easy to think that it was just coincidence, but the timing of everything was just so uncanny that I've begun to see it as synchronicity. So the thing is that I've been wanting to find a team of people to, that I could work well with and collaborate with for a while now. And at first, uh, my very first idea was to look on Fiverr or other freelancing uh, websites to try to build out a team that way. But the thing is, is that I don't really have an, a steady income from my businesses yet. And so I don't really think that would be a viable option yet, uh, especially because it'd be pretty much casting a wide net and hoping for the best. So I didn't think that was exactly the best strategy. <laughs> and somewhere along the line, I joined a spiritual community online. And at some point I started thinking, well, maybe this would be a good way to find people that I could, could collaborate with because I already connect with them on a spiritual level, which is really important to me. But even though that's true and I think these people are really cool, they express their creativity and their spirituality and their ideas and whatever else in different ways than mine, which is amazing. You know, it's been really cool to see that and it's been, I've been learning a lot from them and being, I've been inspired from some of them too. But as far as business relations go and running a business with them. I don't necessarily think that would, that would be the best idea. Just because, like I said, on a business level, the connection isn't there. On the creative level, the connection isn't there. They want to do their own thing and I want to do mine. So, so then as a last resort, I also started to consider maybe working with friends because I obviously do connect with them on similar interests and we do things similarly, which is why we became friends in the first place. I think you mostly become friends with people that you see yourself in and that you resonate with. But I ultimately decided that that wasn't a good idea either because I'm hesitant of mixing friendship with business and, you know, all the pitfalls that that might entail so i didn't want to risk it so i pretty much gave up on the idea to find a team of collaborators anytime soon but what i find so interesting is that pretty much the moment i decided to face my fears is the moment that people and opportunities started to pop in, up in my life and these people and opportunities are exactly in line with what i want to do and position put me in a really good position to get there so let me explain how that happened. Three weeks ago, I decided to attend an open mic just, just for fun as a spectator to enjoy myself for the night. But the instant that I walked in the, into the door, I was asked, are you one of the performers? And to that I answered no, but I was still given instructions as to how I should wait for my name to be called before going on up on stage and performing my poem. Obviously, I wasn't there to perform, so I ignored the instructions and sat down. And as I was waiting, as I was sitting and waiting for the event to start, the host came up to me and introduced herself. And almost the first question she asked me was, are you here to perform? And to that, I again said no. So after some small talk, she started going around the room again and introducing herself and talking to the patrons. And then some time passes and a woman comes and sits in the chair next to me and eventually st strikes up a conversation with me. 
and we're actually getting along really well and eventually she asked so are you one of the performers <laughs> and i get and again i said no because and this time i explained myself and i said that it was because i didn't have any material prepared uh, but unlike the other two women she didn't think that was a good enough answer and she said, that doesn't matter. Anyone can go up on stage, say whatever it is that's on their mind and potentially change someone's life. You never know, spontaneity. And so to that, I responded jokingly, yeah, you could be that person, <laughs> but she wouldn't let up. And so a little into the conversation, she actually called the host over and she said, you know, this girl, she's going to perform next week. <laughs> which was completely to my surprise. I never told her that I, that I would do that. And so I just looked at the host and waited for her response and you know what she said? <laughs> she said, see, I knew you guys sat for a reason. So did I perform that night? <laughs> no. <laughs> but after about the fourth time of being asked if I was going to perform, it started feeling surreal, almost like I was being given a message of some sort. And that day was the day that things started changing for me. Because at some point during my conversation with the lady who sat next to me, I gave her my business card. And so she told me that the person going around the room talking to people and taking photographs was her husband. And that he was actually a photojournalist for the local newspaper and worked closely with the people running the venue. And eventually, after some time, he came and sat with her at the table, and when he did, she handed him my business card. And I saw him look at it, and he, he didn't see my name, and he didn't see my number because they're not on there. And I could tell that he wasn't impressed. <laughs> and he just tucked it away with his other things, and so I thought nothing was going to come out of, out of that interaction. And I've handed out my business card a lot of times before and nothing has happened. So I, you know, pretty much dismissed it. I didn't think anything of it and I continued enjoying my night. So then eventually Monday rolls around and I check my business email and I actually found five emails from this guy who I, I indirectly met at the, at the event. And what's more is that he's offering me to use that venue and that space to launch Unbound Creation. And additionally, to join a group of two other people who would help me do this, just that. So in the end, without even trying and without even really meaning to, I did eventually find a group of people that I could work closely with and collaborate with and that I felt connected to and identified with on multiple different levels, you know, on a business level, on a personal level, on a, to an extent even on a spiritual level, definitely on a creative level. Basically more than I ever could have asked for or made happen myself. And the best part is that even though they're professionals, even though some of them have been at their craft perfecting it for years on end and have the knowledge and experience to show for it, they're totally willing to meet me where I'm at and even even teach me and help me grow in the skills that, I, that I'm interested in. And these people are literally experts in exactly the fields that I want to develop, which are photography, filmography, podcasting and talking head videos, interviews, public speaking, creating hype around myself and my, my work, and doing all of that authentically. And so the first time I met one of them, we literally sat down and talked for probably close to an hour. And even though she's a lot more established than I am, I never once felt nervous or the need to put on airs. It felt like I was talking to a friend, even though she was dropping bombs every other sentence. <laughs> so you may be wondering, what did we talk about? Fear. <laughs> it's funny because it almost felt like a guided self-inquiry. And no, I wasn't the, the one to bring up fear. She was the one who directed the conversation toward, towards that topic. 
The first thing she asked me was, what are you afraid of? And to my surprise, I kind of had trouble coming up with an answer, which I later realized was because I really don't have anything to be afraid of. It's all in my head. But I eventually gave her an answer anyways, and I said, a failure. And so she asked, so what is failure? And again, I had trouble coming up with an answer, but after thinking for some time, I said, not getting to where I want to be. And so of course she asked, and where is it that you want to be? At this point, I was sort of starting to catch on, so I answered, and I genuinely meant it. I guess there is no de destination. Every time I reach one goal, I, I immediately have another one. And to that she answered, exactly. <laughs> there is no destination, so you can't fail as long as you try. The only time you fail is when you stop trying. Mistakes are just lessons. Every time you try, you either get what you were hoping for, or you learn something new. But if you stop trying, you don't get either. You box yourself in. Then she waited and allowed me to let that sink in. It was also during that conversation as she explained to me that the purpose of any artist and any entrepreneur should be to be of service to those around them that I realized how selfish I had become. She explained to me that allowing fear to cut your dreams short not only robs you of your future but, but robs other people of their future too. If you allow fear to make you play small, then you won't take the steps that you need to take to develop your craft and materialize the seed that was planted, planted within you since birth. And because you didn't take those steps, you won't be where you need to be when the time comes for you to, to pass that knowledge, experience, and influence, and so on, to someone else. And so they won't have access to a mentor or teacher at a critical time in their path for them to learn the skills that they need to develop to then pass it on to someone else. And so in that way, deciding to give up on yourself is not only a disservice to yourself, but to others around you too. When she saw my phone on the table, she explained it to me another way. She asked me, how many people's work, time, and talent do you think went into the making of this phone? I answered, a lot. So what if even one of these people decided not to show up and do that work? Just think about that for a second. Of course, some of you guys may, may answer that someone else would have stepped up to the job and got it done anyways, but that's kind of missing the point. What she was asking was irrespective of the scenario. What she was asking was, what happens when we don't all step up and do our part? And I'll tell you what happens, we break down society breaks down. We stop progressing as individuals and as a people. It may not be noticeable at first, but every little thing starts adding up into something bigger until you're past the tipping, tipping point. So sure, you could decide not to get up and start writing that book that you've always wanted to write, or convince yourself that you'll never be the actor that you want to be on the silver screen so you might as well stop trying and perfecting your acting skills now. Or let the voices of other people convince you to walk the well-trodden path instead of the path that feels right to you. And you may not even notice the consequence of those inactions at first, but after a week, a month, 10 years, don't let yourself get to the point where you find out what that looks and feels like. So thank you guys so much for watching. I feel so honored to be able to share my thoughts with you guys. If you like this video, please hit that like button. And if any part of the video resonated with you, please consider subscribing so that it can reach other people. But regardless of whether you do or you don't, thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you next time.